My next project is to take the transfer case out of my beautiful old Land Rover here. So to facilitate that, I have begun removing the interior components and I've stacked them back here in the back. Uh, once I get the seat brackets off of here with these top cushions I'll, and get the rest of the floor taken out, I've got part of the floor taken out here, then I'll be able to uh, get this box out which should expose the uh, transfer case. My goal here is to find out why it won't come out of uh, four-wheel drive and also replace the front and rear output seals, which are leaking badly. At least the front one is. I'm not sure about the back one. But that's where we're headed. Get me seats out of here so that I can remove the floor pans and stuff like that and this thing's got a real hodgepodge of you know, hardware in it some of it's rusted some of it's uh, I guess Whitworth and ah, it's just a mix of stuff but it's making it complicated and it's too hot to work out here I'm gradually getting this thing taken apart getting the interior ripped apart Got all the seats out. Got the hump off the transmission. Got the floorboard out of the other side. Kind of thing. This little tray right back here behind the box is kind of nice for dropping all your hardware in. Uh, keep it out of the way. So, um, guess the next thing I do is start pulling the box itself out. It's Saturday morning, and it's about 80 degrees out of here. Still trying to get this box out of here. I got a new element has been thrown into the mix. There's um, some undercoating under there. Not much of it left, but it gets around the head of these nuts and bolts underneath and makes it really interesting. As you can see, I got the whole bevy of tools out here. Just trying to get a few nuts and bolts out. Once I get the ones out of the side, should be a piece of cake. Huh. Well, I've encountered the impossible bolt. The nut on the other side was apparently a captive nut welded to the body and it broke loose, of course when I was trying to get it out and it's up in a cavity where I can touch it but I can't get any tool on it and what really makes this a lot of fun is this whole operation is caked with dried up mud because it's a Land Rover but it gives me an excuse to go buy a pencil grinder just grind the head off this thing After a lot of cussing and fuming, I've finally got the box ready to pull out of here. I think it's all busted loose. Now I got one wire over there that's ground for the gas sending unit that I have to disconnect before I actually do this. But uh, took a lot of cussing and a lot of removing old cantankerous hardware. seat box on the ground guts of car displayed prominently uh, now I can get in here and start pulling out this transfer case which was the goal of this project Making progress here. We got the rear drive shaft dropped down. Got the front drive shaft disconnected. I uh, got the hand brake 
disconnected down here and of course the handbrake drum came off with the rear drive shaft um, I gotta hope that the exhaust system is not in the way of pulling this thing out of here the book says I gotta pull this relay shaft out for the uh, emergency brake but I'm not really sure if that's the case or not probably is so I'll just plan on it if you think you're gonna skate by and get away without removing something to get this thing out of here you're probably mistaken I just got the hand brake relay shaft out and it's not difficult, it's just tedious as all get out. But I've got the rear hub off. The, um, it's going to need a speedy sleeve when I put a new seal on it. I think that uh, Rovers North has that. But the only problem I might have is with this exhaust pipe over here. I hope I can clear it without taking that apart because it is really ugly. I mean a torch will clean that up and let me get those bolts out but I really don't want to take it apart. We'll see. I've gotten the I've gotten the uh, cover off the back of the transfer case here. The intermediate gear is ready to drop out, so all that remains is to remove these bolts around the housing and the bolts, the nuts that are up inside here, and then we should be able to. Um, fix this thing but right now I don't have an engine hoist somebody borrowed it I'm waiting for them to bring it back so we'll proceed when that happens okay transfer case is out we're transferring it to the table over here drop it down not alone <laughs> okay okay so there it is on the table we're gonna be pulling this uh, front wheel drive case off of here and hope we discover inside what is keeping it from coming out of four-wheel drive This is the front output shaft housing. Uh, I got the old seal out. It was a bear to get out. Uh, I was able to pound the new seal in there. I uh, got to wipe up this excess sealant around it. The next thing I did was install a speedy sleeve on the shaft that goes through this because it had a an annual or ring around it that had been worn by the old seal so now this is after a little cleanup this is basically ready to go back in i'm using high lamar blue for my uh, general sealant on stuff like the perimeter of the seal 
and the speedy sleeve and any gaskets that I'm putting back in. But I don't for the places where I don't have a gasket, I'm going to use this uh, right stuff by Permatex uh, one minute black gasket maker. This is great stuff. Um, it really fills gaps and uh, I, it's not going to leak from my experience. So, okay, here's the rear drive flange back in place. Um, as you can see, the right stuff material scooched out of the uh, mating surfaces there, so it's a pretty good bet that we've got a good seal. Still got to get a cotter pin in this uh, nut. I was hoping I could. I was hoping I could avoid removing this speedometer housing and seal holder thing I'm a Bobby here but um I, I don't think I can drive the seal in over this shaft without damaging it so um, taking off the uh, speedometer drive and gonna pull it off of here here's the speedo drive gear with its o-ring sits under another cover just down here and a little judicious uh, prying and tapping it just pulls out now time to remove the housing I was not aware of this shim that goes between the transfer case and the speedometer drive housing, uh, but here it is in the book, and it comes in different thicknesses, but I'm assuming once it's been shimmed properly, if you don't change anything, you just put it back in. But it looks like a great place for leaks. Well, this is kind of a shame. Somebody really beat the crud out of this housing, getting the seal out at some point in the past. I'm gonna try and smooth it down the best I can, but uh, other than that, it's just gonna be sealant of some sort. With a little help from Marmaster Tech, I got this uh, speedy sleeve driven down and it's covering up the annular ring around there that uh, might have been a leak. I don't think it'll be a leak now. But I really like these speedy sleeves. They solve a problem very elegantly. I got the speedometer housing back in place. I uh, haven't put the speedometer drive back in yet, but that should be a piece of cake. I didn't have a gasket, so again, I used Permatex right stuff. And I think that will probably seal it up pretty well. We finally got this thing hanging what we think is the right way to take it in through the passenger door, the right hand door and uh, drop it down into place and line it up. Should be a piece of cake. Okay, Max is moving the thing into position to lower down inside the car. I think you're gonna have to go up a smidge, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, that ought to be plenty. Okay, 
thanks to Max's rigging job with the straps and the chain we are sitting here exactly in position we're gonna put the gasket on the uh, output of the transmission here and then we're gonna swing this thing in and start putting some hardware in drive in the Land Rover. It's scary as hell over here. No. Oh! <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> Excuse me. Okay. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Sounds busy, doesn't it? Yeah. 